My name is Ellen Goldring and I'm the Patricia and Rhodes Hart Chair and Professor of Education Policy and Leadership in the Department of Leadership Policy and Organizations here at Peabody. I was a middle school teacher and I was teaching English as a second language overseas. And I noticed that I had a really innovative and very supportive school principal. And despite that fact, I also noticed as a relatively new and young teacher that there was a lot of conflict in the teacher's room and that he struggled to help develop a culture where teachers would cooperate and collaborate and work together and also support one another. And in fact, what we often know about um, schools is that sometimes new teachers come in with a lot of new energy and ideas and veteran teachers kind of look at you and say, we don't do things like that here. And my principal was so supportive of the newer, younger teachers to create an atmosphere that would help them grow and develop. But the veteran teachers were really kind of um, creating quite a lot of conflict. And so I started thinking about what is it about leadership and what is it about the organizational context of schools that's creating that dynamic. And I'm very interested in understanding, back to the reason I got into this field, really understanding how is it that we can support the ongoing development and improvement of school principals. If you are not following us on Twitter, folks, you are missing out, please check us out. We believe that large urban districts need to put resources back into the supervisory role. We need to reframe that role. And so what we're studying is what happens when principals receive a different type of support and a different type of supervision. Could this help overall um, improvement? So another project um, that I conducted with a colleague in my department, Jason Grissom, was really looking at how principals use or do not use uh, teacher effectiveness data. The erythrocytes of mammals lack what? So as we know, there has been a huge um, development of teacher evaluation policies across the United States. And an outcome of that development is the fact that we have now many, many um, new measures of teacher evaluation. And the question is, are principals using those data? And if so, how and why or why not? And it's really interesting because in a recent article that we published in Educational Researcher, uh, we found that principals are relying mostly on teacher observation measures, and we go into why that is. It could be a very good opportunity, and it's very easy for us to say. And it's a wonderful time to be a researcher in the field of leadership and policy. And in fact, in my own career, that has not always been the case. Fifteen years ago, there was very, very little funding in these areas, and with um, the interest of uh, the Gates Foundation, the Wallace Foundation, Spencer, W.T. Grant Foundation, and of course the Institute for, of Education Sciences, we have been very fortunate here at Peabody to really garner um, so many resor resources focused on policy and leadership and school improvement. People matter. It's all about the human capital that's here great faculty, great student, great administrators that have a very shared common vision and common purpose. A deep care about the application of research to real world settings and a deep care for the children and adults in the institutions where they work.